Hey guys, it's Matt. If you're driving, doing something else, just listening, you don't need to see these pictures I took. I took pictures of this CD or CD case front and back inside that I had downstairs in my stack that I'm going to talk about. Those that can see the cover know where I'm going to take this, but um, again, you, you don't need to see this. I will walk you and guide you through the horror by the sound of my voice. It's not, it's not nothing bad. It's just, I'm just fascinated when this stuff happens and now it happens all the time. The synchronicities, it's endless. It's endless. I had to make a video about this because I went, you've got to be kidding me when I realized this today. Also guys, this is the second video I'm making today. If you missed the one that was earlier, I asked everybody to go over to the Chiron last channel where he talks about the current predicament regarding CV, those willing to rent the movie Action Jackson and those not. It's a pretty amazing breakdown, and the link is in the description of the last video sending. We're asking everybody to go over to the Chiron last channel. Now, what happened here today with this? And I'll show some other pictures in just a moment. Well, Matt, even Matt cleaning up the house is bombed with conspiracy. It never ends, I guess, with all of us. Like, Matt, it's not just you, dude. It's, yeah, it is all of us at this point. So here's what happened. All right. Many of us have a longing for the past. Maybe that's what this 80s craze is all about. And people don't even follow the dark reality that we follow. What the reason everybody's craving the 80s, everybody's craving the past. Well, I'm going through this too. I want no part of 2020, 2021, any old song, any old movie. I'm loving old movies like Casablanca, Yesteryear. I'm craving it. I'm sure a lot of you are as well. So I'm cleaning up the house, doing whatever. Clean up Zara's bowl. And I'm like, there's this album I didn't like. It's got to be down there in the stack. George Michael, Songs from the Last Century, where he picks a song from the 30s, from the 40s, from the 50s. It's almost, it tries to do one from each decade. And I remember not liking it very much, but I'm like, okay, this is like old stuff from the 40s or a big band song he does. I'm like, this is kind of a, it, getting me in touch with the last century, so I'm going to go find it. So I find it and I start listening to it. At this point, I'm not looking at the cover or anything. I'm just listening to it. I'm just getting the sense like, well, why would he pick that song? And Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? The, the first part of it starts, I don't know, almost in a conspiratorial sense. I'm getting a, fe a feeling like maybe it, this isn't like a fun thing. Like maybe they're almost like a message is being delivered. You, you know where I'm going, guys. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But then I go back and I look at the, the cover. <laughs> there it is, if you're those that can't see. Of all the, there's hardly any pictures in the CD case little CD booklet. Of all the pictures of all the buildings in all the world, the 1999 album, Songs from the Last Century, is the WTC. Again, th th this booklet isn't like riddled with pictures. There's hardly any pictures. And he uses the same picture front and back, and he's staring right at it. Now again, Songs from the Last Century, where George is just going to pick his favorite songs, of course, from the 50s and the 60s and the 40s, of all the gin joints in all the world, of all the buildings, all the architecture of all the world, you have George in a 1999-99, before the 7-Eleven job application was filled out, you have George staring at the WTC. And I went, and this is after, like, again, I'm listening to these songs and I'm liking them more now than I did in 1999 when I bought this. I'm like, what is this old stuff? Like, you know, I wanted some new stuff from George or whatever I wanted in 1999, wherever I was mentally. I'm like, what's this horse shit? Greg would call it horse shit. But now I'm liking it. I'm like, oh, brother, can you spare a dime? He's doing this really well and some songs I never heard of. And um, even that that creature, uh, Bono, who wrote Miss Sarajevo, and, you know, he, he, he gives $1 to his charity for every $99 he keeps. That's on record. Um, I'm liking what George is doing here, but I'm just getting this sense. And then I look at the cover, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Of all the gin joints in all the world, he's staring front and back cover, hardly any other pictures, they, in 1999, a full year, or at least before... Um, the the um, 7-Eleven job application was submitted to the Quickie Mart. And it's it's also, it's done in 1999, but he calls it Songs from the Last Century. 
So I know it's getting too conspiratorial and was like saying, but Maddie's calling it that because people are going to have the album into into the 2020s and they're going to, but it was, it, when it was made in 99, it's called Songs from the Last Century, but he was in that century when he called it Songs from the Last Century, if you see what I mean. So then I get like ridiculous conspiratorial talking about like, is this the, um, the stalled century theme they're talking about? I, yeah, guys, I know that's way out there and we're just having fun with this. Anybody that's somewhat new to this channel, I'm not as crazy as I sound half the time. But, you know, the, 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 the basic premise here is the basic premise. What are the chances? of Now, anybody that's been doing or been in our community for a number of years, every single one of us would say there's not a chance in, you know what, that this is a coincidence. Of course, it's not a coincidence. Of all the buildings in all the world, songs from the last century, who knows what kind of creepy ode this is. But then you start wanting to look closely at the songs. And I have, uh, we'll go through the, the, the songs, we'll come up in just a moment, um, which songs were chosen from what decade. And, um, you know, right off the bat with Brother, Can You Spare a Dime, um, he, it's a little strange or a little, little conspiratorial, the, the lyrics that start that song off that he skips. He starts uh, into the second verse, which I found very interesting. So let's go to that now. So the first song is from the Depression era, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? You know, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? And I can't sing, but um, he doesn't sing the first verse. The first verse is, considering what we do, very conspiratorial. They used to tell me I was building a dream, and so I followed the mob. When there was earth to plow or guns to bear, I was always on the job. They used to tell me I was building a dream with peace and glory ahead, why should I be standing in line just waiting for bread? You know, say, hey, I did everything you wanted me to do. You know, and I built this and I did this for the system. I did this for you. Now I'm waiting in a damn soup kitchen line for this horse shit. Like, what's, you know, what's going on here? Now, George doesn't sing that. He starts with the railroad line, which is the second verse. I thought that was very interesting. The second song, George covers... Uh, Sting's, you know, Roxanne, or the police's Roxanne. It says written and composed by Sting. Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. And if anybody's would want to ask me, Matt, do you think there's a specific reason the creepy system chose these songs? Yeah, but it's not really apparent. It doesn't jump out at you, and I haven't spent hours looking at it. A lot of the songs, the lyrics are very benign, but considering the title of the album Songs from the Last Century, George staring at the WTC. Yeah, I absolutely believe there's a reason every one of these songs was chosen. And again, with Roxanne, I don't know. Again, a lot of the lyrics, it, it is very, very difficult, but I do believe that. Um, this is maybe the only other picture inside the little booklet. Um, it looks like an instrument, but it also looks like the Ouroboros. The right side of George's face is dark. I mean, it's it's most likely latent right eye symbolism I mean, what have, I'll give you three guesses but you're only going to need one what, why, why wouldn't it be there in, in an album where he's staring at the WTC of all the buildings in the world of thousands of other choices as to what could be behind him um, this is the next song you've changed the sparkle in your eye you've heard this it's, it's you know it's not much there I, I agree where's the conspiracy in that matt that i guess I, it's hard to find I, maybe there isn't any maybe i'm maybe i am going off the deep end but i don't think so next one upbeat my baby just cares for me i mean it's just you know from the 50s or 40s th this song stinks i don't like it and i skip over it don't see any real conspiracy there either i'm still sticking to there's a reason for these songs maybe george was allowed to put in a few of his favorites i don't know the first time ever I saw your face. You know that song. It's terrible. Um, you know, it just seems like a regular love song, but I I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Miss Sarajevo, again, composed by Bono and U2, where maybe $99 of the money made went into his pocket and, and a dollar went to ch his charity. That's what Bono's known for. Um, you know, this one's called I Remember You. I don't even know this song, written by Victor, a name I can't pronounce. I don't know. It's just, I don't know if it's from the 50s or whatever. Again, not much here. Just taking you through the songs. Secret Love, written by Sammy Fain and Paul Francis Webster. <laughs> Once I had a secret love that lived within the heart of me. I don't know. I don't know what creepy ode this is. I'm sticking to my story. It's a creepy ode to 
they're gods. God, I mean, it's a, it's a, you cannot be serious moment. I don't know. This is creepy though. Wild is the wind. Okay. Wild is the wind. When you go back and look at a song that's also covered by David Bowie, that's also covered by Barbara Streisand, and she's not kicking everybody off her Malibu beach thinking it's hers. She's covering this. The creepiest characters are covering this song, of which nobody's heard this song, guys, past, you know, maybe maybe it was big in, with Johnny Mathis at one point for a while. Nobody's heard of this song into the early 70s through today. To cover this one... It's from a two-bit movie called Wild in the Wind, where a guy falls in love, where he, he marries his wife's sister, and then the sister leaves him. And it just seems like a two-bit movie. It's just the lyrics, it, it's an ode, it's, it's, it might be a you cannot be serious moment. It's, it may be an ode to their gods or something. Again, when George Michael covers it, and Barbra Streisand, and Bowie, the creepiest of the creeps, especially Bowie, there's a reason for it. A song nobody's basically ever heard of. Where or When, written by Richard Rogers and Lauren's Hart. Um, when You're Awake, The Things You Think Come From the Dreams You Dream. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't care to spend all day looking over the lyrics, guys. I just, when I get a sense that this is a creepy ode, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to that. There's a hidden track of an instrumental that comes 20 seconds after the last song. So, Matt, you're just going by your gut feeling without any research or without any, yeah, yeah. Because that's that's true knowledge. What are we? Am I going to do? Trust? Do a Google search? Trust that? This just shows. It says 1999 in three different places on the back. Artwork 1999. So it proves it was 1999 before the job application was submitted in 2001. And George has a little note. I'd like to thank everybody, Phil and Frank, and he says Happy Y2K. So just showing uh, who's Phil and Frank, the guys he met in that LA bathroom. Um, so, you know, uh, you just, I, I got the sense of this as I was listening to it, you know, that I got that weird sense. And I, I swear guys, when I found this thing, I didn't look closely. I just, I didn't look closely at all. So oh, here's, it is George Michael songs for the last century. Remember not liking it. I'll give it another chance because I'm desperately trying to attach myself to the past as many of us are, or trying to take a step out of this technocratic hell um and then i and then i was getting a sense as i'm listening to it and i listened to it more than once i'm just cleaning up listening it's in the background i'm kind of enjoying the songs that are that i know are 60 70 years old and i'm going and then i looked and i went you've got to be kidding me oh front and back anybody surprised i'll give you three guesses but you're only going to need one i got to make a damn video about this Anybody say, Matt, we've seen this. Yeah, we have seen this. There's nothing new. There's no breakthrough here. It's just the amount of times this happens, and it's still happening. You know, we were doing this back with the Russian vids in 2008, 2009, 10, 11. Hey, look at this, 9-11 reference. Look at this. It's still happening. It probably will never end. That's what's so fascinating. Thanks, guys.